The bodies of these ethereal beings are less than 4% organic material. The rest is just water and the magic of life. They are adapted to wandering along marine highways, capturing small fish and plankton larvae along the way. Cnidaria, a family of corals, anemone, and jellyfish, go through an interesting growth phase. Their eggs turn into benthic polyps, which can reproduce by themselves and become tiny jellyfish that return to marine currents, retransformed as part of zooplankton. Some also serve as protection for young pelagic species, such as the Atlantic horse mackerel and jack mackerel, which develop an immunity to their stinging nematocysts. When they grow older, they'll end up feeding off their host jellyfish. Diatoms are the base of the trophic chain in the ocean. They are the basic food for microcrustaceans and for the larvae of a vast number of species in different stages of development. From lobster and chromis to bluefin tuna, many species have been part of plankton at an earlier time in their lives be it as eggs, larvae, or in their youth. This breeding ground emerges moved by the change of temperature between the cold deep waters and the sun-warmed surface. This biothermal circuit is the engine of the Mediterranean and allows it to regenerate. Underwater peaks are an example of the abrupt encounter between a plethora of nutrients rising from the depths and the continental shelf, causing a proliferation of both pelagic and benthic species that benefit from their privileged position. These barracudas, like many other open water hunters, spawn by dropping their offspring en masse at the whim of sea currents, 
knowing that most of their eggs will be devoured, even before being fertilized, by hordes of small fish. These, in turn, will be fed upon by their own kind, as well as by other predators. Mediterranean barracudas, jack mackerels, gilthead sea bream, and the common dentex are designed by evolution to move almost without effort and accelerate within tenths of a second thanks to their robust caudal fins. In open waters, they tend to travel in groups. When they reach these heights, they spread out to hunt. Blankets of algae and the nooks and crannies within rocks are favorite locations for benthic species in which to lay their eggs. Although not even the careful damselfish will be completely safe from pillaging, these ornate wrasses have found a cavity in which the female laid her eggs and not even the male's characteristic aggressiveness can avoid plundering. By coordinating the moment at which spawning takes place, the damselfish ensures that enough will survive to maintain their population. Their success is evinced by the fact that they are one of the most extended and numerous families on the planet. Fish that are specialized at capturing worms, small crustaceans, and mollusks among rocks and algae, such as sargo and hardheads, also find plenty of food in these submerged peaks. where different densities of water and currents collide with prominent geologic features, are a true meeting point for innumerable species belonging to very diverse biotopes. Many arrive here dragged by or taking advantage of the unstoppable flow of currents. They come from great distances to coincide with optimum tides. Others are permanent residents of these submerged islands with an amazing biodiversity that play a vital role in energy exchange.